Hello everyone, I hope you are doing well. In this video, we will be finding out the indices for the directions in the cubic unit cell. In previous video, we calculated the Miller indices for direction A and in this video, I will be calculating the Miller indices for direction B. The method is super easy and you will be amazed by how easy the method is. Okay, so let's quickly get started and before we dive into the problem we should first know the steps that we are going to follow in finding out the indices for the directions okay these steps are really crucial and we'll be following these steps okay these are the basic steps so let's have a look on these steps we'll just read them and we'll understand them as we'll apply in the problem so you'll better know them so here are the steps that are involved in here and the first step is to define the coordinate system. Whenever you are finding out the Miller indices of directions or planes, the first important, the most important step is to define the coordinate system. And as you can see in our case, the coordinate system has already been defined. It's predefined coordinate system. In some cases, the problem that is given to you, they have already defined the coordinate system for you. So you don't have to. But in some other cases, the coordinate system is not defined. So you have to do it yourself. All right. So it's totally find this origin this one okay uh, this point as origin works really fine in every case so you can take it as origin and uh, this is the positive x-axis this is the positive y-axis as you can see on the screen that they have used a similar uh, coordinate system hence we'll be using this coordinate system as well in our problem while finding out the indices for direction a b c or d or whatever it is i'll always use this coordinate system because it's my favorite so the first step is to define the coordinate system the next most important step is to find out the tail coordinates of the direction and then the head coordinates of the direction these are the central uh, steps and they'll define your final Miller indices. Okay, this is the crucial part and rest of everything is really easy. So we'll be finding out the tail coordinates and head coordinates of the direction as we know that a direction has uh, this shape, this graphical representation and it has two main components. One is its tail. This initial point is called as its tail and uh, the other point is its head which is right here. Okay this is its head and we'll be finding out the coordinates with respect to origin coordinates means that what is its position with respect to origin it's simply a map that you have to follow in order to reach to point whose coordinates you are right for example tail coordinates mean that starting from origin what motions along x y and z directions you have to make in order to reach point p which is tail okay it's just like a map of a certain location where the locations here are the head and the tail of the direction whose Miller indices you want to find out okay and after finding out the tail and head coordinates you will subtract the tail coordinates from head coordinates all right and after doing that we'll make some checks like if there are fractions then you have to remove the fractions and uh, you have to make sure that the indices or the numbers that you have got so far or in least integer form all right so all of these things we'll be doing right there in direction b so let's quickly get started as we have seen the major steps here is the direction b we can see here okay this is the direction b whose miller indices we'll be finding out and uh, we can see luckily that this is our origin and the tail of this direction is at origin as well so the tail coordinates are really simple here and we do not have to move anywhere from origin since the tail is at origin so its coordinates will be zero in x direction zero in y direction and zero in z direction all right so no motion along z x y or z direction will be needed to reach tail because it's at origin okay it's at origin now let's find out the head coordinates which is where the head of this direction is we can see here that it's here and if you really see it then it's on this plane okay this is the side wall we have this side wall and the head of this vector is at this side wall you can clearly see it all right this is the side wall and and here right at the center of this wall the head of the vector is okay and they have also told you these points these are the points uh, for the x and z directions y how we can say that 1 by 2 1 by 2 the points they have mentioned here are for x and z direction it is because we know that this 
plane is at y equal to one point. This is the plane which is located at y equals one position. We can see here that since y is one, then half and half the numbers they have shown here are for the other coordinates which are x and z directions. Okay, and we can we could have even guessed it even if they have not mentioned it here. All right, whenever. Um, let me tell you a rule that you have to follow while assigning these numbers to the coordinates. This rule is really simple. Whenever you are moving from one corner of the unit cell to the other corner of the unit cell along the axis direction, this length is taken as 1. Okay. If you have moved, for example, if you have traveled the distance half of it, even, okay, uh, if you travel half of this distance, this whole distance is 1 and if you travel half of it then you will take half as the coordinate. Alright, so what if they haven't mentioned these points here, so what would have, uh, we would have done, okay. So let's do that. Now let's have a look on how we can determine the coordinates without these hints that are already given because they are not always given. So we should know the method to find them. So this is how you are going to do this. Starting from a region, we start uh, motion um, starting from a region and we want to reach this point, head point. All right. And we know that it is at the center of this side plane. What we have to do to reach that point, starting from a region, we'll move one unit along y direction to the other corner of the unit cell since we are moving along the y direction and from one corner to the other corner that is why that length would be taken as one okay we moved one unit along y direction and then um, you can see that here is the point so i'll move halfway along x direction this is parallel to x direction okay so we moved half of this distance this is the total distance this was the total distance and i travel half of it and i moved half half distance along x direction and then from this point onwards i moved half the half way upward in z direction and we can see here if i would have drawn the complete line it would have been one and since i moved the half of it so that is why this is um half motion for the z direction all right so we can clearly see the coordinates for the head and uh, that was really simple and it is half along x direction then half uh, then one along y direction and then half along z direction all right so it was really simple now we need to do the other steps which are head minus tail coordinates in exam this is how you are gonna attempt this question first of all you write for direction b whatever name you have given to this direction you can even let it for example if the name is not given you can let it let the direction be b or a whatever name that you want to give it and then you'll write the tail coordinates are the tail coordinates are you write the tail coordinates which were 0, 0 and 0. After doing that, you write the head coordinates, you write the head coordinates, coordinates of direction or simply of B or head 1 by 2, 1 and 1 by 2. Alright, so this is how you are going to write it. After that, what you will do? is head minus tail coordinates so let me rub it you'll write operation that is head minus tail coordinates all right and you'll make three sections one is for x direction the other is for the y direction and the last one is for the z direction as we know the tail coordinates are this and head coordinates are this so keeping in view the order of subtraction like we will write the first the head coordinate and we'll subtract it from the corresponding tail coordinate so x from x y from y and z from z all right so for x direction 
first we will write head coordinate which is 1 by 2 it's 1 by 2 minus tail coordinate which is 0 and you will write equals to 1 by 2 simply and then we have 1 for head for y and 0 for tail so 1 minus 0 which is equals to 1 then you will write 1 by 2 from head of um, head <laughs> minus tail coordinate of z z coordinate of tail z coordinate of tail which is 0 and 1 by 2 minus 0 is 1 by 2 again so the numbers we have got so far are this 1 by 2 for x 1 for y and 1 by 2 for z as we can see here there are fractions involved so we have to remove the fractions and um, we'll write operation remove fraction and for removing the fraction what we do is to multiply the LCM of denominators with each of these numbers okay so we can see here that denominators here are 2 and 2 and LCM of 2 is simply 2 all right so we'll write it here what we are gonna do multiplying the LCM of denominators multiplying by 2 simply you can write it okay but you should know that how you know that you are you are supposed to multiply it by 2 it is because the LCM of denominators was 2 so we'll multiply each of these numbers by 2 you will have to do it here okay let me do it here as well 1 by 2 multiply by 2 for x 1 multiply by 2 for y 1 by 2 multiply by 2 for z 2 and 2 cancels out and it's 1 which is left behind it's 1 multiply 2 which is 2 and 2 to cancel it's 1 left so we are left with 1 2 and 1 and we can see here that they are in least integer form for example there is no number that could be divided by each of these numbers that can make it lesser okay because if we divide any other number any other integer any other positive integer then it will become fraction all right so for example what that mean is sometimes we get some numbers like um, like that maybe 4 2 2 okay if we divide each of these numbers by 2 by similar number 2 then it could be reduced to a least integer form which cannot be reduced further because there is no other number that could be divided to this number to make it least integer integer is a number is a whole number an integer can't be a fraction okay so by integer I mean that so that no fraction results so it could not be reduced any further so uh, that is how we mean by reducing to a least integer form so 1 to 1 is the least integer form and it doesn't have any fraction so this is our final answer similar indices of our directions are 1 2 1 you will write first you will write the number that you got from x coordinate then you will write the number that you got for, from y coordinate and then at the end from z coordinate okay and they are written without any spaces in between them and enclosed in these square brackets no commas no dots nothing else okay so this is how you define the three index system and uh, or miller indices for directions in cubic unit cell in next video we'll be doing it for direction c i'll attach that video in the description box or in comment section you can simply check out the playlist solid state physics english solid state physics one two or whatever solid state physics playlist you will open it uh, you'll find these videos in it okay so yeah goodbye take care like share and subscribe